hey, 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 hey. Y'all remember that? Oh, God. Just, I'm totally telling my age. Remember that? Hey, 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 hey. What was that? Amy, text me and tell me. Was that from, um, that wasn't Good Times. Was it Good Times? I don't know. Somebody tell me what TV show that was from. I just remember going, hi, 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 hi. It was rerun. It was rerun. Who was on rerun? Oh, what's happening? And we just typed me and said, what's happening? And you know what's happening tonight? The KOQ reunion show continues with two of my favorite people from the very beginning. I know you're going to be like, what? I didn't say two, not two. One doesn't get on my nerves. One does. <laughs> I had to say that before she got on. Uh, two of my favorite people that were ever on Kim of Queens ever, two of my favorite people, two of the most talented women that I worked with on Kim of Queens, um, Angie and Mara Collins. They're here tonight to answer all your questions. Everybody is already, there's already 44 comments. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just read some of them off. Just to, I, Okay, Octavia says, yay! Okay, I've got one that says, um, do you know when this is going to start? We started. Um, did she forget about the lie? No, I'm here. Um, she's probably getting ready. If you know me, it takes a lot to look halfway decent. Um, I love um, Mara. Oh, yeah, she's here. I love Mara, too. So many of you are coming on. Fat Albert. No, that wasn't Fat Albert. That was what's happening. It was rerun. Um, so many people are already on. Hey, Kim. Hey, girl. Hey, Elizabeth. Got some, uh, um, hey, from Arizona. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad you're talking to these two. Oh, I can't wait. There's so much to talk about. Hey, from Texas. You guys are getting on. Um, I have two. How do I describe Mara? Probably the sweetest heart of any young person I've ever met in my entire life. Not only is she beautiful and talented, but y'all, that's a good hearted girl right there. She loves big, so talented. Um, but I think that's what I love about her most is her art and Angie talking about talented. Y'all didn't even get to see any of that on the show. Bless their hearts. They couldn't film the right show to save their life. She, we're going to talk about all that today. We're going to talk about our beast that we had with each other. Cause we talked on the phone the other day for about an hour. She saw my mother. Please put your hands together and welcome. Hey, 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 hey. It's <laughs> Angie and Mara. Hi. Oh my gosh, y'all. I was out here screaming, Fat Albert. What's a Fat Albert? Hey, he says, Hey, hey, hey. It's I think Rerun said that. It was Rerun. Again, Angie, you were wrong and I was right. <laughs> no, it's not. You look fantastic. I love the Silver Fox. Thank you. God, I gave love it. it. Don't you love it, Mara? Yes. Very few people can pull off. At first, I wasn't sure about it, but now that it's grown out, I, I really oh like God. it. Mara has talked more in the last two seconds than she talked to me the whole entire show on TV. <laughs> I love it. You know, and, and uh, when I talked to Deb and Hannah, Hannah, I couldn't shut her up. She And I was just like, where was this girl? Tell me what has been going on with the two of you. Angie, you look fabulous. Mara, you look stunning. Thank you. All right. Tell me what's been going on. So, I mean, you know, this year was my senior year of high school. Oh, I know, girl. So, I mean, I haven't really been doing much. Quarantine. How in the world, like, first of all, Angie, I know you so well. People don't know that we were friends. We've been friends. We, we still are friends. Uh, not frenemies. We're not enemies. I do not hate you. You piss me off all the time, but I do not hate you. It's like a sister type relationship. You know what I'm saying? I can say what I want to about you. If somebody else does, I'm going to cut them. You know, it's that kind of relationship. How in the world did you, Angie, not be a handle Mara not being able to walk the stage and graduate? Because girl, Angie throws a party and does a poster and does a celebration like none other. Well, actually, when it all started, she decided to glitter my name. Yes, <laughs> graduate, graduate, class of 2020 on the front door with it. With glitter. That does not surprise me whatsoever. Hey, my name. I love it. And it says it's the flowers. Of course. Well, we're going to get there. We're going to talk about all that. Okay, so let's talk about the meltdown. I'm going to be honest with you. 
What? I'm proud about the graduation, but I have a lot of other people fighting for the graduation too. So I kind of have been laid back about that because I'm real confident in my super, our superintendent. So I knew that he was going to have something for the kids. That prom's what about whipped me down. I know. Angie, me, I, that would kill me. For, why, why was prom a big deal? I already know. But go ahead. Okay, well, you want to know why it was really a big deal? Because this brat... I didn't have to go to school on time her 11th grade year, so she could not go to her junior prom because she had too many tardies. That's not right. Well, it happened. You get And for the like, first time, Mama parties. Angie, well, I didn't go up there and raise you, I would have gone up and had something to say about that. Now. Well, I didn't. You, you should be proud. I'm being proud. You, you, you mellowed out. That's I'm pretty. She sat her tail at the house on prom night. Mara? Actually, she showed up at the senior walk and acted like everything was fine. I wouldn't never show my face, but anyway. <laughs> and so I had poured my heart and soul, and everybody that loves Mar down here had to approve the dress and make sure it was perfect. And we already had the flowers booked and the tux picked out for a boyfriend, and there it hangs in the closet. And then now, and now there is no problem. There, is, now there problem. is no problem. Okay, we've already gotten questions. Uh, people, uh, Amy said there's a lot of people watching on YouTube. They want to know, is Mara still clogging? Yes. Okay. Should we go ahead and just here, but now I'm going to teach it. So. Okay. Can we just break the clogging controversy down? Okay. Honestly, it's not that I can't stand the clogging. I cannot stand in a pageant in the South. That's the only thing. Can you tap, do ballet or something? And do you know the Cloggers International World of America Unite? I think I was going to get clogging shoes thrown at me if I walked to the mall in Georgia. I, did, did, did I come across like I hated cloggers, Angie? Yes. I did not. You're a lie. You're a lie. You I don't know. hate cloggers. I don't hate clogging. I just wanted Mara to do something else other than clogging. And you oh, know, oh, oh, oh. the audience loves clogging. You did too, and you know it. Actually, clogging is the most fun type of dance. It is. You can ask anybody because you can do a lot of repetition and people don't really notice it. But tap is my favorite. For Mar to perform, yeah. tap is my favorite. Well, and that's what I'm saying because I, what people don't understand about Mara, and I, I hope that it came across on the show because we didn't really, the show should have been more about these girls' talents and their growth and blah, 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 blah. People don't understand that you and Mara and you and your sister have a very, very successful, amazing dance studio in Vidalia called Sassy Sisters. I'm going to give you all the information about that. So if you're ever in that area and you need to take a dance class or you need to, somewhere to, you need to go to Angie's studio because they know what they're doing. And second, Mara teaches dance like none other. And so that's for me. I wanted her to show that clogging. That's, I mean, that tap dancing, that side of her. So if you're <laughs> solo this year, let's comment to Miss Kim and tell her what you want at dance competition. Tell me up right now. All my little girls, all Mars little girls are watching. And she had eight solos. Well, she had two duets and the six, six solos, solos she put on stage this year. She was the choreographer. She cut all the music. She picked the costumes and everything. Wow. But see, that to me... That's natural. I, I see Mara teaching dance all over the world to so many young people because she's an amazing teacher. And she gets that from you, Angie. She really, really does. You're an amazing teacher, too. That was never shown on Kim McQueen's. So let's talk about it because there's so many people saying, Mara, what are your hobbies? Mara, do, yes, Angie still owns the dance studio. We're talking about that. Yeah. Um, how did you get onto the show? Let's start there. How did y'all get cast on Kim McQueen's? I can't remember. You don't know? I can't. I do know. I just can't remember. Okay, so remember I hunted you down because my mom wanted to go to a beloved concert. Oh, I remember. Okay, keep talking. So I just said, I'm going to just message this chick. Why not? So I did, and you started answering me back, and I was like, is this for real you? Because I was like, I, you came to our church, and I love you, and you did my mom's eyebrows. And I love first time in Vidalia. Okay. So anyway, we were, Mar had mono, we were sitting in the um, emergency room waiting to see the doctor for the eighth time, and we started chatting back and forth, and you were like, can I send your information to the producers? And I was like, I guess. 
So then I started getting all these random phone calls from like these California numbers, and I thought, I know I paid all my bills, but <laughs> so finally I answered the Los Angeles number, and it was um, Oliver. Yeah, and we got to talking, and we did a Skype interview, and then we went to Atlanta, and then I was like, I am not doing this. Mark can do it. I am not getting on TV. No, never, ever, ever. Mark can do it. Famous last words. Yeah. <laughs> you did a lot of never say nervous. Mara, when you came up and audition, I remember this now. Um, because I I sent in your you, I sent in Addison, I sent in Debbie and Hannah. There were several people I said because I knew when I met you and Mara, I knew I said, you know what? There's so many people out there that can benefit from hearing A their story. Um because a lot of people don't understand. We never explored the Mara story about being adopted. We never got to explore that. I wanted to explore that because that's such an amazing story. Y'all should hear. Angie, you and Mara got to tell your story a little bit about how God brought y'all two together, how you prayed and prayed for But Do you remember us talking about that? I remember us talking about that and you crying and I crying. And you prayed for that baby. And you prayed for Mara. And you said, I knew when I held her, she was the one. Do you remember that? Yep. People didn't even know Mara was adopted. Tell a little bit about that. Okay, so I obviously couldn't get pregnant, so I went through a Christian adoption agency called Covenant Care in Macon. And they um, they have you make like birth mother books, and they it's kind of sort of like a scrapbook. Anyway, you're actually selected from the birth mother, and then you go in for an interview. So I we went through all that, and I was able to be in the delivery room wow. when she was born. And we... Brought her home from the hospital to our little tiny town. And it was like I had a famous person. I was, my whole yard was covered. The whole driveway was covered. Flowers everywhere. And maybe she was like a little princess for about three years until we woke up one day and figured out that we were going to have another little princess, Danny. And then we, you know, we had to all the princess. That's, that's your niece. I have so many people saying right now, uh, oh my gosh, you're adopted. Uh, a couple people said, so am I. Um, hashtag Jesus is trending. This is such good vibes. See, this is what we never got to show on the show. Um, yes, Angie and I will throw down over a red lipstick, but when it comes to our faith and what we stand for, we're very much lockstep. Very much lockstep. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. That's what people never got to see. That's what I wish they did. So that's what we're doing this now. Okay, a couple of things. Mara. What is, somebody's asking, what are your hobbies? I could probably answer that, but I'll let you answer it. Well, my hobbies actually are teaching dance. Yeah. And, you know, spending time with my mom and my family. You're, y'all are a very tight family. Yes. Very. We just brought my mom home. She had, to, <laughs> yep, she had to be in Meadows Park for a while. She was um, having some health issues and we couldn't take care of her and work. So, she, uh, we found we have this great facility here in Badea, and they took great care of her and gave her, you know, got her settled with her medicine and stuff. And on Saturday, we were able to bring her home, and so she is home for good with us now, and she's doing wonderful, and it's like a miracle. It is a miracle. God is good. Okay, so someone said, Mara, will you please give me a shout out? This is Octavia uh, Sailors. Octavia Sailors. Uh huh. Give her a shout out. Hi, Tavia Sailors. <laughs> Octavia, I love that. Okay, so I have a funny story about a shout out, okay? Okay, because okay, a lot of people are saying shout me out. So everybody, y'all will have to go tomorrow's Instagram. We'll give that in a minute. We will. Y'all leave us a message. We'll give you a shout out. We'll, we'll give you a shout out. That's the inbox message on uh, Instagram. Or Facebook message you back. I can't remember. Amy didn't turn on my ticker tape here. Hold on. Y'all keep, you talk about the shout outs and I'm going to find out how to get y'all scrolling so people can start following you. Okay. So first thing that happened to me was I had no idea. Like all these followers were like, all these people were asking me to follow them and adding me on Facebook. Good. After the show started? I was like, what the heck is going on? This was like three or four months ago. And I was like, what? I mean, Kim McQueen's is dead, gone, buried. Ain't no, never. it is not. Never will die. So I had one of my little friends call me and she said, Angie, I said, yes. Yeah. She said, can you talk to Riley Beth? And I said, sure. And so Riley Beth was scared. She wouldn't talk to me, but come <laughs> out, she has been watching Kim McQueen's Reaper, sure. or whatever you call it on Freeman. Yeah. Whatever. Like all these little kids that are between the ages of eight and 15 or whatever. And she said, 
she cannot believe that you and I are, you know, our bestest friends. And I was like, Riley Beth, I named you, honey. We were at a pageant. Her mama coached Marla with me and was in pageants and all that stuff. And the beautiful Megan's beautiful. Our daughter's beautiful. Anyway, she's married to a dentist in town. It's just a great. But Riley Beth was like, you mean you know her mama? So she calls me up and I'm like, hey, honey, how are you? She's like, anyway. <laughs> He didn't know what he was Why are they watching this stuff? And she said, everybody's watching it. And I'm like, Mark, you know people are watching Kim and Queen? She was like, huh? So Deborah Knight says, you just shout our your sassy babies. You better shout oh, out. Yeah. I have shouted out to my sassy babies. Y'all must have missed it at the beginning. They, they came in on the back end, girl. They're about All to get right. married. Sister babies and my sassy supreme mom and coach girl, coaching girls. Y'all okay. better come in on this and let Miss Kim know y'all are watching. Uh, Angie, people don't know this that you, in, in your own right, are a pageant coach, a, a hair and makeup. Angie is very, very gifted. Again, you, you have to understand none of that got showed on the show. I have always respected your giftings in those areas. People did not understand that, they didn't know that about you and I. Okay, well. In case y'all want to know what was happening in the background, all these other people who looked good on stage had some people hired to help them. Me and Mara stuck over here in the corner having to do our own thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Michelle Meadows from Michelle's and Adele. If y'all ever looking oh, God. for I love that place. Type of a pageant dress, an interview gown. You can get anything there. Dress, anything. She is your woman. She took her to wardrobe her, and we're still best friends today. That's one of the best things that I had happened to me through the show was meeting her through some other people. And she is a genuine person. She loves everybody. She and she's professional. She is yes. professional. And she, and if she puts her name on it, you can better bet it's right. Okay. Let me ask you this, Mara, because people don't know that you actually went to Miss Georgia with Outstanding Team. Did you not? Yes, I was in Miss Georgia's Outstanding Team. I've had some people asking, did you do pageants after the show? Tell about that experience. Tell who you went and who you represented and did you clock? <laughs> no, I did not clog. I did dance on Miss George's that same team. Um, I met a bunch of people that mm -hmm. that knew me from the show, and I met people that did not know me from the show, but I introduced them to the show. And um, I actually had a great time. I, I was Miss Flint Rivers at Sending Team. I actually have had, I really had a good time with um, Miss Amanda, which was one Amanda Beery. Amanda Beery. Oh, yeah. Um, what do you call directors. directors of the pageant? And um, her daughter and Paris were actually all good friends. Now, me did that scare you when you competed at, at Miss Georgia? Yes, I okay, look at why? What scares you the most? And I tried to tell y'all the whole darn time on Kim McQueen. What scared you the most? Interview. Hello. Listen. When you look back at the contestants that were there, there were some great contestants. This was five or six years ago, okay? She <laughs> at the very least got the non-finalist talent award. But when she got there, she was scared to death. It's, it's a very to day. She was only 14. And she was, you get a bunch of 17, 19 year olds. I get it. But I never once prepared her to be scared because I didn't think she would be scared. Well, she's been on national stages. Mara, if someone asked, are you still doing pageants or would you still do pageants? Um, I actually am hanging up all of my dresses, <laughs> well, even though Mama doesn't want me to. I'm just gonna help her out backstage with doing hair and makeup because I, I think. But you know what, though, I think I'm you can. Yeah, I think you can. You, you need to be entrepreneurial. It's time for you to start your business, girl. Because I'm telling you, you at 19 are as good as some of the people I have seen do the coaching, training, dance that that are 30, 35 on up. I'm serious. And you know well, I she relates to the girl. She knows what their fears are. She knows what they're anticipating when they're standing behind the, the stack, you know, the curtains. She's been put in so many situations and had to dig her way out till she understands what she has to do. And therefore she she can under you know, she knows what to say to in each situation. Where I'm just like but, uh, you know. I swear. I swear. That's a whole nother episode. We're gonna talk about it in a minute. Okay, Mara, everybody is sitting here obsessed with your hair. Uh, someone says, Angie, they love your glasses. There's so many girls that are sitting here saying, 
there's one woman, I got to scroll back because you've got to give her a shout out. It, it was so sweet to hear her say this. She says she's adopting a girl, a baby girl tomorrow. Something <laughs> smile. What a chuckle at her. Got an inbox, whoever you are, please. Yeah. Lady, send us an inbox. We want Amy, to Amy and Lauren, try to find out who said that so that I can sell Angie so she can speak to that woman tomorrow. Can you believe that? Um, Amara and Angie, who didn't you like on Kim of Queens? Half the time, I didn't like none of y'all. Fair. But all the time, I loved everybody. I just didn't yeah. like none of y'all. Yeah, it, it was a, it was a weird dynamic because when you put a bunch of women, strong women in a room, you're going to have some throwdowns. But it was never to the point of like, I don't know. It's all bonded us in, in a certain way. Wouldn't you say? Well, I'm going to just say something. Just I, don't know. Know. I had to drag all them mamas around. I think, you, I think you were the head mom in charge. Absolutely. And then they tried to throw all these curves and balls in there at me and piss me off. And I was like, uh -uh. I'm gonna, they knew I was going to fight for my child. All those other moms will be like, ooh, what will Kim say? Ooh, <laughs> I don't a dang. I'm getting mine. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Someone just said, uh, did Allison get on your nerves? No. I love Allison. Allison's great. She gets on mine. She does. She's a little hyper sometimes. You want to say like she's very hyper. But that's I think that's her um you know, that's part of her charm. Listen, yeah. <laughs> I need some of that energy. God help me. Okay, so so it's Donna Ray Brown said my sister is going to be adopted tomorrow. That's not the one I saw, Lauren. There was another one. So give Donna Ray Brown a shout out. Good luck tomorrow. Love that. Um, there was another question I have wanted to ask you. Who was your favorite person on the show? Mine or Mars? Both. Um, Let's keep it to daughters and moms. Okay. You mean of the original group or the, the people? Whatever group, whatever group you work with. Okay, my my very favorite one, and I cannot believe right this minute her name has slipped my mind. But what's the precious girl who did the horses? Um, oh. race, race car driver girl, maybe too. Yeah, you had a lot of them. I'm talking about the girls, the the the, the, the pros. Who is your favorite pro? Who really, was? Angie? Are you really gonna make that face? My favorite one. Um, okay, exactly. I, I, mean, I don't even know who the pros were. I'm so confused. I mean, I didn't <laughs> hate everybody, but I, I mean, I didn't hate everybody, but I liked everybody. I don't really have a favorite. Okay, who was your? What was your favorite episode or pageant you did on the show? Swimsuit. Oh, that was a good one. That's my favorite. Mar, you look slamming. I don't think I'd look like that now if I put on the swimsuit. <laughs> okay, well. Bull honk, uh uh, you bull crap. You would totally look that way. I'm looking at you right now, and I saw that graduation picture. Okay, uh, Mara, do, uh, who was Martin? Well, I'm not gonna ask who was Mara's enemy because she don't have one. That ain't even like something she'd ask, so I'm not gonna a a answer that. Um, everybody's wanting a shout out. Y'all gonna have to go to Mara's Instagram and see, and, and Angie's Instagram and everything. They're scrolling. Um, da -da 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 -da. Oh, my Facebook is Martha me. Brown. Martha <laughs> Brown is the one who's um, adopting. Martha Brown. Give her a okay. Hey, Martha Brown, please inbox us. Mm -hmm. My okay. Facebook is Angie, A N G I E Brooks, B R O O K S. And mine's just Mara Brooklyn. And it's going down, it's scrolling down here. Mara, what was the hardest lesson you learned while doing pageants? And what was the best lesson? So give me the hardest first. Probably the hardest lesson is um, try to not let your competitors get to you. Mm, oh, that's a good one, girl. And the now, why would you say that? So I think that was some depth, and I want to explore. So why would you? Why would you say that? Like, did you, were you put in circumstances where you felt? Because don't you think Angie and Mara? Not only did you have to compete in pageants on the show, but don't you think there was a little bit of competitiveness going on just being on the show in general? Yes. Talk to me about that. I just felt like. Um, everybody thought that like in the pageant world, like if you look good, 
like in anything. Right. You just have people looking at you and judging you and be like, oh, she doesn't look that great. Maybe she doesn't have enough confidence to wear that. So you're saying there's bullying going on both ways. Mm, I agree with that. We'll get to that in a second. And what was your favorite lesson or the, the most valued lesson you learned on the show? Just be yourself. Nobody knows who you really are off the stage, especially who you, who you don't show normally. Right. Well, I think people know who you were. You were very transparent, Mark. There was nothing fake about you and Angie at all. You were very authentic. You were very real. People saw that and in, in, immediately. And and I think that's what makes you so special, Mara, is because that heart comes through regardless. I mean, you can try to whatever, but your heart is always so right there. You know, that's what's that's that's your superpower. It's just that love that you have. And I think Angie's was always the strength. You know, um, I, I love that. I love seeing women and young girls be strong in who they are. It's because we, we have to fight enough, much less fight with each other, right? Okay, so uh, Kim, uh, Kim, tell me if it's easy to go from dance to pageants. Mar uh, Mar we, uh, and Angie, we all answer that. They want to know, is it easy to go from dancing, if you're a dancer, to pageants? Being a dancer is definitely an advantage for sure. You, you know, yes. you're, already, you're already over the part of stage fright. You don't, you know, you don't have to worry about, obviously, your memory is good because you're able to follow choreo choreography and things. You're, of course, able to follow the T pattern and the step, step, turn and the whole nine yards, whatever you have to remember. So definitely anybody that dances or is in theater or even gymnastics has an advantage in pageants, I think. Yes. I do, too, because I think being on stage is just one of those things. Pageants has to go a step further, though. You have to be able to speak. Right. You have to be able to cultivate an opinion. You have to be able to know what you believe and why you believe it. You have to be able to stand and speak to why you believe it. To me, um, that's the part of pageantry that takes it over the top. That makes it, like, to me, valuable forever. So that would be. Really that, that can be. I don't know that that can be taught. I think it totally can be taught. Totally can be taught. I think it can be coached, but I don't think it can be taught. Like, I think. If I mean, you, it's like. It's like. Cool. Go, Mark! Angie, I swear, who's this kid? I'm in love with her. Go, Mara. It's like if you're in school, if you want to learn something, then you sit there and you focus on it because it has your interest. Right. But if you don't want to learn it, you just kind of daze off. Well, and I'll say this, like, because there's a question for you, Angie. Someone said, but I'll say this leading into that question. Um, I think you being very strong and vocal, and you're not, you don't care what people think. Where Mara is a little bit more timid and shy, would care what people think. And this question is for you, Angie. Was it hard to let your daughter do pageants on the show? And were you scared of people judging her? Heck yeah. Okay. It was awful. Every time she walked on stage and had to speak, I felt like I was going to puke because either she was going to say something that made no sense at all, mm -hmm. or she was going to... I, I didn't just, just never knew what she was going to do. Do you think Mara had a do you think, and all the girls, it wasn't just you, Mara. Everybody has a hard time speaking in public or speaking on stage. It's a very hard thing to do. But Angie, do you think that having you who, who is so well-spoken and having that to, to look to, do you, did that scare you, Mara, at all? Because your mom is such a good speaker. Was it hard for you to, did that intimidate you? Yes, and it still does sometimes. Oh God, this is the freaking show. Why did we do <laughs> I think really that I spoke too much in her place. Mm. Instead, of of mother, so. instead of stepping back and letting her answer her own questions. And when somebody would ask her something, I would say, you know, Mara, say this. You know, Mara, say that. And still she would just always look at me, you know, like, what do I do? And I right. should have totally backed all the way off. From what she, you know, what she believed in and what she thought and what she wanted to do and let her, you know, make her own decisions. But I'm too, I'm too much of a control, control freak to do that. So, of course, you know, here I will. You don't understand. You're very similar to my mom in that way. I don't like to be. Mom didn't fight me back. She, she was probably, I promise you, this is how I feel. And she can correct me if I'm wrong. But I feel like when she stood on stage to answer her own stage question. That she was more worried about what I was going to think about her than she was what the judges were going to think. Because she knew that when she stepped foot off that stage, I was going to instantly tell her 
what she did wrong, right, however. And she might or might not know what the judges thought. That's just my opinion. I think she was more scared of me than she was actually being judged by strangers. Is that the truth, Mara? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, well, this cat question was already answered. This was Angie scared every time Mara went on stage. Definitely. I don't think every time. Would you say every like if it was it was like, you know, if it was if it was her doing her pageant walk or her talent or her rehearsed, I knew she couldn't be beat. But when it comes to that speaking on that microphone or going into an interview. That's scary. It is scary. Angie, how did you get Mara uh, started in pageants? Well, as we talked about, I had the dance studio and I had a lot of kids and, you know, and I, I did a lot of coaching at the dance studio and I'd never done any pageant coaching or anything before. And Mara loved to be on stage. She was like five, six, seven years old. She knew she cried not to leave the stage. She's a stage girl. I kept saying, what can we do? What can we do? And so we got into, we actually got into a lot of glitz pageants first. Right. With all, you know, like their fun fashion routines and swimwear routines and outfit of choice routines were kind of sort of like a little dance routine because you could use your own music and stuff. So that's how we spent our weekends together. Was um, you I don't understand. It's a sport. It's right. like a sport. Okay. There, I've got to ask this because it's such an amazing question. Um, and I cannot wait to get your answer. Uh, would you ever consider doing a mother and daughter pageant, Angie? Hail to the nine. <laughs> well, not really because you've done one. You said what I consider. Okay. Let me tell you something. I knew. I knew when you said I'm never doing a pageant. You said that on the show. Now, you told me that. And I never shared that with anybody. That was told in confidence. I never shared it. But you said that out loud. I said, you, why did you say that? Because you know that's the next thing they going to do. Well, I didn't want to do it, but I didn't. Did. That was real. People think that was not real. That was very, very, was real. very real. I remember cussing and screaming and yelling and crying. They cut half that out. We fought. I was. We had a screaming match. Yeah, I was mad. I don't know why you weren't. I don't know why you were so mad about it. I didn't want to do that. Well, you did it. You did quite well. Okay. Um, yeah, if I was skinny, I would have won too. I don't think. I don't think skinny had nothing to do with it. Well, I did win the audience. By God. You did, honey. I'm sorry. And that man judge too. Well, he was, he was, a, he loved you. Okay, look, look, look. Um, this is, this is, I mean, the qu questions are overwhelming. Most questions we've ever had. Um, they ask him, hold on, I got to get it because I want to do it. This is hard to let your daughter, da, 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 da. hold on, don't, don't, don't shut me out, don't shut me out. Kim, did you really kick Mara and Angie off the show or was that scripted? That was totally 100% scripted. I was so upset. I said, this is a mistake. I was so upset. And I was told you were coming back. Well, we did come back. Sometimes. A little bit. Sometimes. Not enough, in my opinion. Well. So to answer your question, I mean, I was, I was about, you have to understand, all of us at that point, there was so much going on behind the scenes. I was just, it was hard on everybody. And yes, I think Angie and I were at our, we were, we were at our point where we couldn't, it was just unraveling all around. Um, but no, I did not want to kick them off the show at all, at all. So. And at the end of the day, no matter what kind of fit I pitched, I still listen to what you said because I feel like that you were, you know, it was Kim of Queens for God's sake. So it wasn't Angie of Queens, you know, so. I the only thing I wanted these girls to do is is step. The only thing Mara had to work on was that talking in that interview. The only thing uh, Deb and Han Hannah need to work on was sp speaking without being a freaking robot. I mean, I could go on. The only thing Addison had to work on was just polish up the country. You can't run on a stick the whole time. You got to have. Neither one of them had a talent either. Well, but I mean, they did. Yes, they did. Everybody has a talent, but I'm just saying, like, well, a talent everybody is in a pageant. I don't agree with you there. That's where you and I don't agree. I believe both those girls have talent. It's not what Mara's talent is. 
Okay. I told I you that. in a negative way. I just mean like a, I, I should have say a winning, like something that would separate the boys from the girls. You know what the I mean? The point for me was not ever winning, but the point for me with the show was to show show these girls go from point A to Z coming out ready for life success. That was all I all caught up in the winning. I did not. I, I, never, I, I did. A lot of people did. Because yeah. I think that's what Dance Moms, that's what she always pushed. Win, 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 win. I yeah. wanted to win yeah. a different way. Yeah. I wanted to see Mara get up and say, I believe in blah, blah, blah because of blah, blah, blah. Thank you and good night. And that's all I, because to me, that would be the biggest win of all. And some, some, we just didn't have a chance to do that in season two. I think Mara would have got there it, it, after season one. Look, I can already tell Mara's a different kid. Not only she's matured more, but she has, Kim of Queens gave, it was a hard thing to do. Wouldn't you say, I would, would you, would you revisit that experience again? Some things I would and some things I wouldn't. Not so those seasons. You gotta have a yes or no. Those producers, no. If you had to do it all over again, the same thing it was, you know, an evolved thing, would you do it again? The whole thing. Now, where you are, your age, your experience, everything, if they called you and said, we're going to do Kim of Queens 2.0, would you participate? Maybe. Just say what you mean to say. I mean, there's a possibility I wouldn't. because of No, there's not. You would do it. <laughs> I'll make her do it. <laughs> She would do it. Let me tell you why. This is, this is where I'm getting at. It's like, Mara, I know it was a hard experience. And I know it was, and it was a hard time like in everybody's lives personally, too. See, that's what everybody's in there. Behind the scenes, there was a lot going on, too. But what you grew from that, oh, my God. It's like you're a different person. Yeah. Do you not agree? It's hard for us, especially, like, to leave Vidalia, where we have two choices for restaurants and Go to Atlanta and live in a hotel for months. That's hard. Time. That's hard. Yeah, and leave you know leave my business and leave our family, and then when you get back home, you don't really know where you fit in because you're like, I don't have to live like this little podunk mess anymore. Oh come on, see, so you had a taste of it. See, that's real talk. Yeah, that that's that's what's driven me, and and it's changed my coaching ways for my girls too because for me. It was before the show was always about the win, you know, give me the crown, give me the trophy, give me the, you know, the sash. But after the show, I figured out, you know, I've been able to coach a lot of my moms, especially and say, you know, it's about the time that you spend with the kids. Mm. It, it's, it's about what you pour into them and make them feel confident about their self. If they can't do their modeling routine one week, they, you know, fall flat on their face. And then three weeks later, they practice their butt off and they get out there and they nail it, and they still don't win. It's it's like you said a while ago. It's a win. It's, it's a win. win, even if we don't have the crown. It's a bigger win because right. you win more from you. You look. You learn more from losing than you ever do winning. I'm gonna give you a couple of comments here, Angie, uh, that you probably didn't get when you were on the show. I'm impressed with Angie's willingness to admit that she has a control freak and could identify with Mara what she was feeling um, with her mom's opinion and with the judges' thought. That's difficult for a parent to admit especially publicly, bravo. I think that's what I'm talking about is that the Kim of Queens, I think, and I'm going to, I want to hear what you and Mara have to say about why you think people are still watching Kim of Queens. There's not a doubt in my mind. The reason why people are watching it is because of the, the story, like what the story should have been about love and growth and determination and, even if you do have a knockdown drag out at the end of the day, you still have respect for your sisters, whether it's your blood sister or it's your pageant sister or it's your coach, you know, whatever it is, everybody's in the same, you know, everybody's rowing the same boat. We got to fill those holes up with whatever we got, you know, and all, all that stretching and stringing and scrapping and all that is just not part of our plan. And, of course, when we look at a dress, you know, we're going to say, I like the red one, and you're going to say, I like the white one, and, you know, or whatever. But really and truly what what, what I feel like we learned, or I know that I learned from the show, is it's not about the dress on the girl. It's about the girl that's in the dress. Right. Okay. Okay. 
So That's it. Right. And and so many young girls need this message. Don't you think, Mara? I mean, you you've been you've been bullied, you've been called names, you've been prejudged, you've been don't don't is it don't you think that's just a cry for help for these girls to get attention? They need it, girls need to support one another. Talk about that because it wasn't always so easy when you got off of Kimmel Queens, was it? No, it was not easy at all. And I it's um I, when I went into Queen of Queens, I had a really big group of friends, and they were all they were all really nice. And this was in sixth grade, so I mean that's the time where like you find out like who your real friends are. Yeah, I was gonna say, were they really good friends, or were they just acquaintances? <laughs> then when I, I, as soon as I could, I come back and I just turn my back, and they would just not talk to me anymore. Well, I think it's hard too, Mar, because you don't, you, you people see you as a star. They see you as someone that has had an experience that they could only dream of having. So be, I, I, I don't even have to tell you that because this is who you are as a person. Just be kind and, and sweet regardless because, you know, I mean, I'm looking at all these comments. Everybody is just saying, oh my God, I love Mar. I love Angie. Well, I mean, the I mean, hard, Kim, is that we didn't really feel like that. Like, we didn't. I hear you like we were a star we felt like we were working our butts off well you were but you oh. love hard work so i'm not on study I know, but i'm just saying like when mara came home and everybody thought oh she's you know movie star she's a tv star whatever you were. i don't know i just never i don't know i never felt like that and my true friends never treated me like that my true friends have oh, always been yeah. like somebody will come up to me in the mall or something and be like oh my gosh are you angie and they're like oh forgot about all that and that's that was great for me because I did find out who my true friends were yeah. and I still have those true friends today and um and Mara was in a bad spot I oftentimes say that I feel like I dug a big old hole and put her in there and, her and told her to dig her way out the best way she could no you did not well she's she's better now but we went through a mess Wait, but well, I do. I know, but this is the thing. I, I know, and it was a hard for everybody for reasons we're not going to get into here because this, this, it's not about all of us, right? It's about things that were going on behind the scenes. But I will say this: uh, I see a strength in Mara that I didn't used to see. So I think having to go through that crap early on that will serve you. I think. What do you think? I think it. I really do think it did me some good to like go and go and do that earlier on instead of now when I've actually you know found myself and like what I. I'm gonna cry. Don't make me cry. I'm gonna cry. That's good to hear. Okay, so guess who has a question for you, Angie? <laughs> I love this. Sarah and Bonnie. One of our favorite people on the planet. Yeah. Sarah was one of our producers. She's still I can hear her, my producer forever. Um, I don't care if I do another show. She's on it. That's my girl. That's my writer. Dry and TV. Angie, I know you love Sarah too. So this is what she asked. Angie, did you ever feel like you were misunderstood by fans of the show? And Mara, did you ever feel protective of your mom over the comments made on social media? Uh, yeah, I definitely did. I I would see a comment and I would go and delete it. <laughs> I do too. I don't, I don't play. I don't play dirty like that. Mm -mm. No, see, no. I didn't really care because I knew in the end everybody was going to find out because I'm used to that my whole life. Like in high school, I was called Nellie Olson. You know, like I don't even really know what they meant by that. Besides, I was like a snotty nosed bully or something. But I really I, I, do you I, think you're a bully. Do you? Think, I don't know if I call you a bully. Well, some people have called me a bully, and I don't really know where that comes from, but it just means that, like, if you got five packs of chips and there's six people, I'm going to get my chips. <laughs> you better get that, too. Yeah, you better get in there and get yours, because I'm getting mine. Well, and I think that's personality types. That's that's another thing I wanted to explore on the show that we never got to. Yeah, as far as Sarah's question goes, yeah. I really never worried about what anybody said about me because I know, you know, there's one thing I am, and that's true to myself. I know who I am. I know what I'm about. I know who I love. Yeah. And everybody that I've ever had like a major out with have always come around and said, okay, you tried to tell me in the beginning, and right. I didn't see you, but I'm coming back now, and I'm saying I saw Well, I think you've always been a leader, don't you? I think that's your personality type. And I think Mara was, um, you know, she was so young. She was embarrassed by me, like, acting full and um, taking, you know, she she didn't see it as me taking up for her. 
because she wasn't strong enough to take up for herself. She she saw it more of me, you know, just being brazen or whatever, I guess. And I think she might have protected me from the social media stuff because I didn't really see any of that. I like, you know, I, I didn't see a lot of meanness either. I didn't. You know, I didn't you know that whole saying like, I'm too busy loving the people who love me to hate the people who hate me. I don't. I don't care about that. You're too busy doing you. Right. I okay. can't. I can't deal with that. I got. That's just like making friends on the show. I mean, I forever love you and Allison, and Miss Miss Cho. I mean, of course, I loved y'all before the show, and I love y'all forever. But like, I wasn't there to make friends. I was there to be on the TV show and do what I had to do. I wasn't trying to, you know, like. And I think that might have been what Mars' problem was when she went to Miss Georgia too. Like she, she was there. You know, she thought she was there to compete. She didn't really know about all this in the background kind of stuff you had to do because we didn't, you know. Well, and that, that's another thing we, we uh, you know, it, the show experience. There's a lot of politics and everything you do. That's a whole nother show. You can't, you can't, you have to play somewhat of the game. And I think, I think that's why you didn't come back as much as you should have is because you just weren't willing to play the game. Right. And, um, but from a family standpoint, I, we, you know, it, it was not easy for us to not have you and Mara around. I mean, Mara is truly one of my favorite kiddos I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> so you've done something right, Angie. Well. And I'm not the only one who feels that way about Mara. So there was a comfort when y'all were there. It was hard because you were so freaking loud. It, it, I have to leave so many freaking breadcrumbs to get you to the bottom line. Like, Dad, we're trying to get somewhere here. And you're like, but this is it. It's just like my mother. My like, mom is a method to the madness. You know what I'm saying? That frustrated the crap out of me. But, but you know, we loved you. We loved Mara. We, you know, y'all were family, and and I still consider y'all, you know, sisters. You know, your mom, all of it. So it was so hard for us. And it was never the same. I was so disappointed and, and I hated it. And I know Sarah felt the same way. That's why she's on this right now watching y'all. Because <laughs> she loves you. Um, Kim. Uh, One day when you can pick your people to be on your shows, I know we're going to be on my list. So. Well, listen, I'm just telling you, like, if we went to KOQ again, I think it would really, really be great. Because I would do a lot of things different. Of course, I'd have some control, too. But. Um, because people, the girls that watch the show and that it's a new generation watching it, Angie and Mar. I mean, there's so many where they're streaming it and I get messages every single day. And I think what girls and moms and families loved watching was you guys growing up, Mara, us growing as women, us doing life. To, there's nothing more on the planet that women don't love to do is dress up, look pretty, and have a bunch of girlfriends. I mean, that's this and eat. That's the only thing we were missing was the foot, good food. I never so, let us eat, dang it. I swear I was hungry all the time. Was I, was I would be <laughs> kids their food. I mean, every day. But the 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 thing that I feel like the kids relate to, like the, that would help the kids that watch this show is you know, when they see Mara walk across the stage in her designer clothes that Michelle had special order for us and specially fit and everything, she looks like there's nothing, I mean, nobody could touch her. But in her heart and in her soul, she had pain just like everybody else did. She was worried about if her mama was upset, if her gaga was, up, you know, if her gaga was well, if her Aunt Bea was fine, if Danny was there, and if, you know, if she was going to make us proud, if she was going to make you proud, if she was going to have friends when she got back to school. She had the same worries that a lot anybody of anybody in the world. Right. Just like now. She's, you know, she has worries today. And and they are the same worries that millions of other girls her age or or guys have you know, and so they they need to know that they're relatable. You know, that that they're not the only ones sitting in their house worried about what they want to be when they grow up. Or yeah. and you know who just gave you a shout out, Angie and Mark Kent Maxi. Oh yes, all the time. I love you. Yeah, you ladies look so good, and Mara is just a charm. She is. Mara is one of the sweetest young women on the planet. Y'all don't even know her heart is as big as Atlanta, Texas, Georgia, all the South, honey. Mara has a. Well, what we want to know is, or what Mara wants to know, and I don't know that we know how to word this, but we talked about before we came on here, like 
really what we want to know is what can we do for the, the viewers or the people who are watching or you know the people who are following you like as as have been or whatever what can we do to relate you're not a has okay i am i done been had girl no you're not this is why i wanted to have y'all on just so everybody was wanting to say when is Mar and angie coming on and that's like i'm saving I'm, I'm saving i'm saving them i'm saving them to the end here because um you know i just I, I, there were so many things about you too that nobody knew and one is I want y'all to understand and I want you to talk about what you teach your girls in dance and, and you too, Mara, because everybody's asking Mara's graduating. What is she going to do? What is she going to do? Mara, you're going to go in business with your mother at the dance studio, aren't you? And you're going to start teaching dance. Talk about that a little bit. So all, like, all the times it's like I was like 11 or 12. That's what I said I was going to do is grow up and I'm just going to. Take after my mom. Yeah, I knew you were always going to teach dance. I knew that. And then um, about two years ago, I started teaching. And I actually started teaching the baby class. We have a little baby's class. And it was my favorite thing in the whole world. It was so it was so fun. And then I got to the older classes, and it was still wonderful. So now I just I teach team and I, so that they can compete their dances on stage and see. It just – it's just – the thing I want to do is just cause my heart. Well, I mean, and you're good at it. Okay, it's we've already been on like 51 minutes. I can't believe it. like we just started. Is there anything that anyone else that you want anyone else to know from your Chemical Queen experience before we start telling everybody where to follow you, how to get in touch with Sassy Sisters, all of that good stuff? Well, I mean, I'm sure I could sit here and talk all night, but the main thing is just that you know. That everywhere there's a mess, there's a message. Come on now. Our our message is that we're not perfect, and I'm loud, and she's quiet. But if you put God first and you let Him know, you know, you let Him direct the path, which is probably some mistakes that I made during the show because I was so exhausted and so strong from pillar to post, I didn't know which way was up or down or whatever. I can relate. That um. I kind of lost, you know, I kind of lost my way in pouring into other people. And mm. that, that's where, that's where, that's why my dance studio is what it is. That's why my sister and I are successful because we don't just teach dance. We teach life skills. We teach our babies that if they're scared to say they're scared, if they're ready to say they're ready. You know, we, we talk to our moms like they're our best friends. They're not just a customer who writes us a check. You know, they, they have access to us all the time. And that's what I'm proud that Mara knows. You know, her girls won't go on stage without her being beside them. They don't want to compete in the pageant if she's not going to be there. If they're not, if she's not there to roll their hair and do their makeup, they don't want to go. Well, that's why I wanted you on the show right there. That was it. <laughs> I remember having that conversation the first night we talked for two hours on the phone, and I just said, "This girl's got to be on the show." And her daughter was the most beautiful, loving, precious. How old? 13. 13. Huh? 13. 13. My son's 13 in June. And he's, I just, I just think, yeah. I mean, Mara, you have just become one of the most beautiful, smart, intelligent, talented, well spoken. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I'm proud of you. And Angie, I respect you. I love you. Um, you're one of the most talented strong leaders and i know you're doing good things for the lord and good things for the girls and i just i love you both so much so let me just go ahead and tell everybody where they can get a hold of you um all of your social media um amy my uh, facebook is angie brooks i don't know why she did that because that whatever you know how everything thinks amy's perfect okay angie brooks and mine's more so when, when all this goes off we will tag it Again, y'all in the in the comment section above and get the right one. Um, here's the sassy sister. Because Mar has so Mar has a chance to do some. Um, she has some time, especially if she's just teaching dance next year. Um, she has some time to pour into these kids. Like, what do y'all want to see? Do y'all want some? You know, what what do y'all need from us? Let us love. Let's yeah. Y'all got to start it. Start it. Everybody go on and follow Mara and Angie. They are going to be starting this new thing with this newfound 
streaming that's going on with KOQ. So it's KOQ 2.0 with Mara and Angie. So make sure you go follow them on social. Here's their sassy sisters. So you can Google this. Uh, look it up. They're sassy sisters. I got to show this. Marina made that sign for her. Oh gosh, I love that. Tomorrow, I swear you're one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. And look at this. Okay. I've said it once. I'll say it again. The girl can work a red now. Uh huh. Look at that. That's hair and makeup done by Alex Truth. Truth. Isn't that gorgeous? I got treated that day by one of her besties. That's a hair and makeup. She's really poured in tomorrow. Showing her how to, like, she's giving Mara makeup classes and hair. Oh, how to. Yeah. Well. There's nobody that can work it. One last question. Everybody's saying, Mara, what's your TikTok? Um, I think it's really? Mara.Collins. Mara. Watch me do one, girl. I did one. I, I've, already, I've already heard. It's already, the news has already gotten back to me, Angie. You're a TikTok star with your little attitude. <laughs> I do another one. My, do another one, Angie. Do another. My real ad on TikTok is m.c.squared. Okay. That went over my head. So you have to text me that when we get off so I can post that. Because everybody's saying, what's her TikTok? What's her TikTok? Okay. I love you both. I love you. Love you. Follow Angie and Mara on social media. We will post it again in the text. Tell your mother I said welcome home and I love her. Hey. Tell Sabrina, Danny, everybody down in Vidalia. Tell all the people at First Baptist Vidalia I love them. Tell Bo and Plenty that they were babies when I saw them. I know. They're they better not be looking at girls. Oh, girl, that's a whole nother show. How to kill your preteen in three minutes. I get the, I get the roll eyes. I'm like, oh my God, all of that. I hope they don't write like Allison. I'm hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all. Love, love me. You. Okay. Bye. Oh my gosh, I love them too so much. I'm so glad they came on. I hope you enjoyed it. It's Kim of Queens uh, reunion uh, with Angie and Mara. Follow them on their social media. Keep up with them. They're trying to do great things for God and for girls. So hit them up on Sassy Sisters. Hit them up on all their social media. I will again, we'll be posting it in the content when this post. And also next week is our final KOQ reunion. We're having Kelly and Addison. Uh, so you don't want to miss that it's next Tuesday night. But go follow Mara and Angie. Um, give them shout outs. Let them know how much you love and appreciate them. And again, they have offered to help and, and, and really just be there for any of you that have any questions or concerns or comments. Young girls, we all need to support each other. Women, we need to love each other and lift each other up because this is this is it's powerful. When a group of women come together in community, there's nothing we can't do. Till next week, I love you so much. This is Kim Gravel signing off. Bye.